Okay, how are you guys doing? This is uh, Mike Johnston coming to you from the Health and Hope Clinic Pharmacy. And in this last prescription assistance, patient assistance program video, we're going to talk about how to determine the quantity and dosage for our inhalers. So this is different than the oral medications, it's different than the insulins. These inhalers will always dose, dose based off of the mass, based off of the mass of the inhaler, off of the mass of the inhaler. And for some of them, they're, they're actually, the, the, the inhalers have some blister packs. And um, for example, Advir, Advir, um, and there's a couple different doses, the most common um, being 50 per, 500 per 50 or 250 per 50. Um, these actually have blisters, they have blisters blister packs that the mechanism um, pops and then you inhale the the remnants of the blister pack and that's actually what actually how the drug is administered so so these have um, some blister packs so there are some inhalers that we use very frequently and we do use a lot of inhalers actually we use a lot of one type of inhaler and the most common um, the most common inhaler that we use in um, in health and hope is going to be a form of albuterol sulfate albuterol sulfate this is a the name of the drug and this comes in a couple different a couple different forms the most common that we have is pro air so the most common that we have is pro air we use that one most frequently sometimes if we want to write for albuterol sulfate again this is just a name brand of albuterol sulfate this is a this is a rescue inhaler that patients that are asthmatic or they have COPD use so they can breathe when they're not able to breathe um, this is uh, this is one form of the drug, and this is obtainable through patient assistance programs. The other one is Ventolin, and you're going to see Ventolin written as HFA. HFA, that's an H. Ventolin HFA. This is another form of Pro Air. These are another form of Pro Air, and this last form that we don't use as often, which is something called Proventil. Proventil, but each one of these are the exact same uh, th same thing about butyl sulfate. So if a provider, a physician, a nurse practitioner, a PA comes up and says, you know, hey, how, how can we get this patient some albuterol sulfate? How can we get some albuterol? Um, they don't often say sulfate, but they'll say, how can we get some albuterol? Each one of these is albuterol. There are they are just different different name brands of the same drug, and they are all very pricey and very ungodly expensive. So um, so we have to work really hard to make sure that we get this for our patients on their behalf. Um, the other common uh, inhaler that we that we're able to get through Health and Hope is the Advirs, and these Advirs come they they look sort of circular, like such, and um, there's a little there's a little mouthpiece here. And, um, and what happens is that there's a little depression, there's a little button that depresses, and it actually, uh, it actually breaks open, it breaks open, I'm going to exacerbate this, it breaks open a pack with a, with a needle or a pen, and you inhale the remnants of that. So you're going to inhale, so this would be a horrible drawing, um, so this would be me, <laughs> or maybe me, uh, so I would inhale... I would inhale the remnants of the blister pack in my mouth. Um, and then that's how it would go down and travel through um, my throat and it would open up the airway and keep it open for a long period of time. So these actually have blister packs. These actually have blister packs. So just be cognizant that we use other inhalers too. These are the most frequent that we use at Health and Hope. If you look um, at any of the computers to the left or to the right, there's going to be a little, there's going to be a, an inhaler worksheet. And I'm sorry, not inhaler worksheet. It's an inhaler uh, list inhaler. And <laughs> can't spell the name. Inhaler, inhaler. It's a little inhaler sheet, and it lists the most common inhalers, and it also lists, lists their mass or their pharmacy quantity per inhaler. So that's going to be the next portion that I'm going to discuss with each one of these. Each one of these has a different quantity or a different mass. So that I'm going to do in red. So here, the quantity per inhaler is going to be 8.5 grams per inhaler. Um, 8.5 grams per inhaler. And I'll just give Ventolin. We usually, this one's not very common. Um, and then Ventolin is going to be a mass of 18 
grams per inhaler. And when we go through this, when we go through the, the lecture video in the next step and we enter these prescriptions, I'm going to show you how we can check for this. And then the blister packs, there's actually six blister, sorry, 60 blister packs, blister packs per inhaler. So these are the way that we will determine the pharmacy dosing. Um, all of our, all of our, um, all inhalers are shipped for a 90 day supply. For 90 days. So we don't have to worry about them being any more or less. We don't have to worry about the 120 day supply. But, um, but we know that they are all shipped for 90 days. So we're going to acquire these for our patients every 90 days. So we're going to have to dose them every 90 days, just like we did with the insulin and some of our other oral medications in, um, in the 14th lecture series video. So um, that just gives a brief overview of inhalers. I know we've gone, this is our second video that involves patient assistance programs and dosing, but hopefully this is all, it's all coalescing and it's making sense to each one of you. And, um, and we're gonna continue on doing some practice prescriptions. So, uh, so notice here we have a drug, it says ProAir. Um, ProAir is gonna be probably, it's, it's definitely the most common uh, inhaler that we obtain for our patients through patient assistance programs. So, so the drug here is going to be. I'll do it in. I'll do it in red black. Um, drug will be Pro Air. And um, and uh, the nice thing is is that the sig here, the sig here is already given to us. And what we're going to learn is that this actually comes as a use. I'm sorry, as a dose of micro 90 micrograms per actualization or per actuation, sorry, actuation, not actualization, actuation, actuation, um, 90 micrograms per actuation, actuation, which means that every time the pro air is depressed and they inhale, they're going to be inhaling 90 micrograms of that albuterol sulfate. And this is just the generic, and we'll always populate that. There's no other, no other concentration the pro air comes um, comes in, so it's the only it's the only concentration that Pro Air exists. So it's one generic one, and um, and all of the inhalers, whether it be Pro Air, Ventolin, or the Provental, they all come in the same doses of 90 micrograms per actualization. They all di they all differ though in the terms of the mass. So um, so now we're going to look at the Sig, and oh, I don't know what I did there, but um, but the Sig here is going to be take one to two puffs QH Q4H PRN shortness of breath, and this Sig will guarantee that. The drug company, which is Teva, uh, or sorry, it's Te Teva, Teva. Actually, someone told me recently it's Teva, not Teva. The drug company is Teva, spelled T-E-V-A, Teva. They will give us the most amount of albuterol sulfates, pro airs, per 90-day period for each one of our patients. So if we write this SIG, and this SIG will automatically populate every time you enter a pro air. Some of the providers may change it. They may want it Q6. However, that will not guarantee the patient receives three inhalers every Every three months. They may only send them two or one depending upon the SIG. So just be just be cognizant of that. Um, so we're going to tell the patient to inhale. Inhale one to two, the quantity is one to two puffs by mouth, and I like to in, I like to insert that by mouth to make sure they know it, they inhale it by mouth. Q4 means every four hours. Every four hours and notice I didn't write out four and four hours because that's not the quantity that's the direction every four hours PRN means when needed so when needed shortness of breath for shortness of breath So that's going to be the SIG. And there's no real way for me to calculate exactly what I want, but each one of these inhalers, any inhaler, will allow you a maximum quantity of three. So that's going to be the quantity that I request. I want, and I'm just going to write in here, I'm going to write that I want three inhalers. Inhalers, even though that's not how I have to input it in our EMR. So I want three inhalers, that's the most that they will give us. So remember, that's the most they will give us, but we have to calculate the quantity. So remember that a ProAir HFA has 8.5 grams per inhaler. That's the mass. The mass is 8.5 grams. So we will multiply this times the value of three inhalers 
and the inhalers cancel, and this will give me a quantity of 25.5 grams. And I know with our last with our last um, discussion in terms of insulins, they um, they will not ever give us a half of an insulin. However, this is going to be the correct quantity that we're going to use for the pro air. Um, each pro air. So if we look at the inhaler, so I'll try drawing it. So not very good at three dimensions. So it looks something like this. So this is the outside canister. And then inside we will have the, the mechanism. Um, there's the actual mechanism that contains the drug albuterol sulfate and this is actually going inside of it. And, um, and in here Every single one of these mechanisms that has the albuterol has 8.5 grams. So the patient, what they'll do is that they will depress, they will depress the inhaler mechanism. This will open up an airway, and then they will breathe all these particulates, all these particulates, which is the albuterol sulfate in the mouth. And there is actually, um, you should actually give a spacer. You should actually give a spacer to each one of these patients. Um, so that way they guarantee to get all of this in here. However, very few of them ever use the spacer. But, but each one of these um, inhalers has a cartridge that contains 8.5 grams. So we will get three of these, which is 8.5 times three, compared to a, a insulin, an insulin needle, for example, an insulin needle, if this was a Lantus pen, a Lantus pen has three mLs, and it's always going to have three mLs. They will never break this up and give you a 1.5 mLs if that's what the patient needs. So that's why we always have to round up. However, each one of these inhalers contains 8.5 grams of the albuterol sulfate. So the quantity that we will input into our EMR is going to be a value of 25.5. So that will be 25.5. The days for this prescription will be a value of 90, and refills will get this three times more after our initial order comes in. So, so just be cognizant of this when we do the um, inhalers. They're very similar to the insulins, um, however slightly different. So this SIG right here, um, I've ha I have this generate every single time the Pro Air comes in. I'm sorry, every time you write for the Pro Air using the EMR, this SIG will generate every single time automatically because this SIG guarantees three inhalers. And I'd rather get as many as we possibly can per order for our patient than not getting as much. So if um, if they uh, if the provider doesn't write for that, for example, let's say the provider writes take one puff by mouth every four hours. Um, if they write take one puff and the one to two goes away, then now the max dose will actually be less. The max dose will actually be less. And in that circumstance, they will only send two inhalers to the patient. So you might want to offer that to the provider um, saying, oh, oh, provider, are you sure you just want to do one? Because if we say one to two puffs by mouth every four hours when needed for shortness of breath, then we can get them three inhalers versus two. Um, and they might say, oh, yeah, yeah, great, great. Um, if the provider says inhale one to two puffs by mouth every eight hours, if they were to change this and this were to become an eight hour time period. Um, if it's every eight hours, then now they would only get one inhaler for every three months. So they would get even less. So, um, so just be cognizant about that. Uh, I, I never want to fudge a prescription, you know, but I know that if we're going to put all this work in to get a medication for a patient, then I'd rather get them as many as they possibly can. And the max they will send is three. The max they will send is three inhalers per shipment. And that's the SIG. This is the SIG you will use to get that dose. And if it's anything more, if they want to do three to four puffs, we do have a couple of patients that are, I know, sorry, two to three puffs by mouth every four hours when needed, the, the max they'll send is three. They won't send any more than three. So um, so just be, just be cognizant of that. Uh, if they need to get more, if some of our patients have some really, really bad um, asthma. They shouldn't be doing any more albuterol than this. However, we do have some patients that do. You might want to recommend to the to the um, provider to write for both Pro Air and Ventolin because they come from different drug companies, and we can obtain both of them independently if they need more than this. However, they shouldn't. So, just as a FYI, most patients, I think we have only one patient that's on more than that needs more than the three Pro Airs per month. So she's on Pro Air and Ventolin, but. Um, but otherwise, otherwise, this is a uh, this is a fair and accurate way to obtain this drug for the patient. 
So on to our next prescription. This is the last one. We only have two, um, two prescriptions, um, two uh, inhalers that we're going to do. So notice this one actually has a little scribble and notice the initial was here. So this was a miss, a mistype or a miswrite, which you're going to see often. You just have to work through it. And notice it says Advir 500 backslash 50. Advir is a combination. It has two different medications in it. And again, this was that blister pack mechanism, the one where they actually depress and it pops the blister pack and they inhale the remnants of the drug that's inside each one of those blister packs. So, um, so this one's actually slightly different. So we will see the drug here is going to be Advir, Advir 500, and the dosage is 500 per 50. There's also 250 per 50, there's 125 per 50, and um, there's a couple different dosages and strengths. So just be cognizant that we have to be careful about this. And the SIG here would be inhale one puff POBID. So, um, so the SIG here will be inhale one, I'm typing out one, I'm typing out, I'm, ri I'm writing and typing out one, puff, PO means by mouth, BID means twice daily. And Advir is actually very liberal. They will send us three inhalers no matter what. So, well, hopefully, okay, I shouldn't say that. Right now, they'll send us three inhalers no matter what. Hopefully that doesn't change, that philosophy doesn't change. So the quantity will be a value of three inhalers, three, mm, three inhalers, I always call them three inhalers, even though they're not really inhalers, um, but they, they always call it an inhaler. Uh, we want to get three inhalers, but the math is, is that every inhaler has 60 blister packs. So there's 60 blister packs per inhaler. So the quantity that this dose is, is a value of 60. And we want to obtain as many as we possibly can for our patient. So we're going to multiply this times three inhalers. The inhalers cancel. 60 times three gives you a value of 180. So the quantity that we're going to input, this is not the quantity, we're not going to dispense the inhaler, will be a value of 180. So that's what we're going to put in here for the quantity. The refills will be three. And and the um, and uh, what else am I missing there? Refills will be three. Oh, I'm sorry. In days, uh, the days will be a value of ninety. So the inhalers aren't so bad. These are the most common ones that we use. But again, if you ever have questions, especially for ones that are more complicated, go through this with a pharmacist. Have someone check it over. Call me on my cell phone. I'll be more than happy to help you and walk you through it. Um, I've often Skyped with people while they've done this. They put me on, um, on FaceTime and they've shown me what they've been doing. So I've, I've had all different ways that people have gone away. People have gone and, and gotten assistance on this and I'll be more than happy to help you do it. So um, this concludes our three different subdivisions of of our module on how to write and calculate the PAP prescriptions. Um, each one of these has the corresponding video that shows how to enter each one of these into our EMR med services. So definitely work through those and practice. If you're at the clinic, um, go ahead and open up one of the computers that isn't being used. Each one of the computers at the clinic has an EMR and uh, maybe one of the desks by PAP, uh, maybe one of the desks in the, in the um, in the uh, um, in the dental offices, they have that as well. Um, just go sit yourself through it and practice. And when you practice, use the patient test patient. So use the patient test patient. That way, if there's any uh, mistakes, there's no impact on any of our other patients. So hopefully this helps you. And again, my name is Mike Johnston, and you can catch me at email mjohnston at healthandhopeclinic.org. Uh, and I hope you guys have a great day and you learned something. Take care.